This video is the first of a mini-series and represents my attempt to streamline the modeling process for some of the most common type of vaults. Being originated either from the circular Roman arch or from the typically Gothic pointed arch, we'll go through a handful of them. In this first episode, we will focus on those coming from the classical circular arch. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. In its basic variant, we could just get away with it with a half circle and a single extrusion. But what is actually interesting about the barrel vault is the decorative coffering structure that usually comes with it. So, I'll do something different and start with a cube, resize it, select the edges at the four corners and bevel them to get this kind of hateful shape. I still want to have a nice square though as the base, as it will conform better to what we'll do next. As such, I'll extrude a few vertices to create the four corners to be then filled with faces. I'll then inset, extrude, inset and extrude inward again, add a bit of a bevel to the edges and remove the faces that we won't need. At this point, I'm going to add an array modifier on the x-axis with merge turned on and a subsequent array modifier this time on the z-axis, still with the merge option ticked. Let's now add a simple deform to the chain set on bend and by pushing the angle up, we can get back the semi-circular shape we were looking for. This system is quite flexible as we can use the array modifiers to dynamically alter the length and width of the vault while everything stays in place. Still, we can push it a bit farther. I'll duplicate the square at the base of the mesh and make it a separate object. I'll then remove the edges in excess and bring one of my custom rosettes into the scene. I'll parent the latter to the newly created square and enable the Instance on Faces option. It is then a matter of finding the right position and dimension for the instance and mesh, and with that done, as we enable all the modifiers back, this is what we have. We can link the number of iterations between the different arrays by choosing a master controller or a main array modifier, and then right-clicking on count and selecting copy data path. Within the modifier to be linked, hover over to count, right-click and select add driver. Choose single property from the drop-down, select the object with the modifier you copied the property from, and hit Ctrl V to paste the path. Under expression, we just want the variable without any manipulation. Let's then hit update dependencies and we are good to go. I'll then repeat the process also for the second array and test that everything is working as intended. Lunettes are essentially little openings and you can notice them in many classical buildings which are usually serving as additional light sources placed directly within the vault itself. For this, I'll start with a circle and I'll give it 24 vertices. I'll also rotate it so that it is facing frontally and remove all of the vertices except those lying on the upper left section. From the top, and with the snapping tool set on increment, I'll move it in edit mode, a bit away from the center, and I'll then add a mirror modifier on both the X and Y axis with clipping turned on. I can now extrude, shield smooth, and add a subdivision surface modifier. We can take care of the rounded corners by creasing the corresponding edges with Shift E and dragging all the way up to one. I'll duplicate the mesh, and you'll see why in a moment, select one of the two meshes and add a first edge loop in the middle and another one to its left. To create the opening, we can simply delete a couple of faces, crease again where needed, select the vertex at the top of the opening and double press G to slide it up to get the semi-circular shape in place. With the edge loop of the opening selected, I'll extrude on the x-axis one and two times and I'll straighten the selection with S, X and 0. I'll select again the edge loop connecting the lunette to the vault and press V to split it and make the lunette a separate object as more often than not it is more efficient to work in a modular way. At this point I'm just playing around with extrusions and bevels to have the outline of the lunette distinguished from the rest of the vault. Speaking of which, I'll add a shrink wrap modifier to it targeting the unmodified version of our mesh to amend the slight pinching generated when we created the opening. I'll then start working on a few additional details, such as adding a bit of thickness to the face loops at the sides of the vault and making sure also in this case that the edge loops are nice and tight by using a bevel modifier. For the central piece I'll duplicate a few faces, make them a separate object and I'll then flatten the shape on the Z axis by pressing S, Z and 0. I rotate it by 90 degrees and add a simple deform modifier set on bend that will be of help when trying to match the curvature of the vault. In edit mode, I'll try to mimic the semi-circular shape of the opening by scaling down and beveling the middle edge loop. 
Again, I create a bit of thickness as to create a sort of framing, hardening the shape with the help of the bevel modifier set on weight, placed right before the subdiv modifier, and by manually selecting the edges I wish to be tight and increasing the bevel weight up to 1 from the side panel. Once done, I place it into position and play a bit with the angle of the simple deform modifier to get the curvature right. To extend the vault, we can of course use arrays on all the different pieces we have, but as these might have different boundaries and to avoid having to eyeball the distance among iterations, the trick is to duplicate one of the vertices and snap it to one of the vertices lying on the extremities of the master object, being, in this case, the vault itself. Again, we can link the number of iterations in all of the arrays modifiers to a master controller, being the array modifier controlling all of the others by using drivers. To put it simply, the dome is just a section of a sphere, but what is interesting here is the structure beneath that makes it coexist with quadrangular spaces. I start again with a circle with 24 vertices, I rotate it frontally and delete all but the upper left section. From the top, I'll move it away from the center and add an empty rotated by 45 degrees to be used as the target of a mirror modifier applied to the circle section. I'll then add another circle and again delete all but a quarter of it and I'll move it up to match the height of the structure. From the top again, I'll push a bit backward the first section we created and I'll move up the other section by the same amount. We can now apply the mirror modifier, get rid of the empty and join the two sections together. Now, in edit mode, we can start joining the pieces and by adding an edge loop right in the middle, we can close the shape with a couple of nice quads. All is left to do now is to snap this vertex back into position along the curvature by aligning it on its normal z-axis to the vertex right above. We can then add a mirror modifier on both the x and y axis with clipping enabled, a subdivision modifier and proceed to crease the rounded corners at the bottom of the mesh. I'm now going to apply the mirror modifier, select the full circle at the top, duplicate it and make it a separate object. If we convert this to a curve, we can use the depth control under the geometry palette in the curve properties to reshape it adding a bit of thickness. Similarly, I'm going to select the four half circles at the sides, again duplicating and separating them from the rest. I'll then convert them to curves and I'll increase the depth value of the bevel under the geometry palette. Generally speaking, when working with curves, be aware that you have a few extra controls. You can taper a section of a curve with Alt-S and you can tilt or rotate a control point with Ctrl-T. Additionally, you can literally draw whatever custom profile you desire, as you would with a standard bevel modifier for non-curve objects. We can now add the dome itself with a sphere cut in half and with an opening at the top. Now, we may want to add decorative coffers also to the dome, and we may attempt to do so by either manually manipulating geometry or perhaps by using the wireframe modifier. But the best option in my opinion, especially for custom shapes, is the following. Starting from a cube, I'll create the desired profile with the usual tools, such as insets, extrusions and bevels. Once done, I'll use an array modifier to stack the mesh vertically and usually 5 to 6 iterations would do. I'll then apply the modifier and extrude up to create the upper portion of the dome. I would then stack the mesh also horizontally a few times with another array modifier and use a simple deform set on bend on the z-axis with the angle all the way up to 360 to get a complete circular pattern. To join the extremities I'll add to the chain a weld modifier and lastly I'll add another simple deform modifier, this time bending on the x-axis, and I will place it right before the original simple deform. By playing with the angle of the second simple deform and with the number of iterations of the array modifier, we can get the shape of the dome in place. To finalize the mesh, I would at this point apply all modifiers, select the circular edge loop at the top, and with proportional editing on, I would proceed to scale down a bit in order to reduce the stretching which is happening at the top of the mesh. With the same technique, I tested a couple of different variations. In the first one, I used this sort of diamond shape that also is very common in coffer domes, and lastly, I repurposed the eightfold pattern used for the barrel vault. Still belonging to the family of vaults originated from a semicircular arch, the groin vault is indeed the intersection between two barrel vaults. But as I prefer to avoid using booleans as much as possible, let me show you a way to get around that. I start once again with a circle with 24 vertices, rotate it on the x-axis and remove the lower half. From the top, I'll move it a bit on the y-axis and, similarly to what we did with the dome, I'll add an empty rotated by 45 degrees 
and I'll use it to drive the mirror modifier into creating the front and left sides of the structure. I will then add another circle, rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis and by 45 degrees on the z-axis. I remove the lower half also in this case and scale up except on the z-axis until I reach the junction of the other two sections. I'll then create a bit of space by pushing the perpendicular half circles back, delete the edges past the respective midpoints, apply the mirror modifier and join everything together. I'll then connect the three sections, add a mirror modifier on both the X and Y axis to complete the structure, shade smooth, use a subdiv modifier to enhance the curvature and crease the corners as usual. The key now is to add a bevel modifier on top of the subdiv, set on weight, and to select the diagonal edge loop and set its weight to 1. We can certainly use an array modifier to increase the number of iterations, but be aware that we are not necessarily limited to straight arrays. In fact, from the curves menu, we could add a circle, make it big enough, and then select our mesh and place a curve modifier on top of the subdiv modifier, targeting the circle or whatever other type of curve we might fancy. Technically speaking, this is also coming from a section of the barrel bolt, but actually there is a much easier way to model it, which consists in adding a sphere and simply tweaking the number of segments. In my case, I'm going to go with 8, I'll then shade smooth, add a subdivision modifier and a bevel modifier, and I will manually set the weight of the edges which are flowing vertically to 1. And that's that really, the rest is just about playing around with all of the tools we already covered, a nice tip is to use the loop tools to create perfect circles out of polygonal topology, and again we can use curves to create the ribs and leverage on the bevel modifier to keep geometry as tight as possible. In the next episode we are going to dive deep into the vaults that are instead built around the typical shape of the pointed arch, from the basic cross vault to the more sophisticated fan vault. All of this broken down into easy bits that you can hopefully get back to in case of need. So, Stay tuned and see you next time.